Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She's back. I am. She's back. And just in time, we're going to talk about Disney's biggest animated bomb ever, mm -hmm. Strange World. It is so much worse than we thought it was going to be. In fact, it made under $20 million domestically. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, and ironically enough, I guess uh, today or yesterday was the uh, debut of Treasure Planet. Yeah, it was it was a Christmas time too. Yeah. Yeah, which made more money than Strange World adjusted. And Treasure place. Planet has been always widely regarded as a huge bomb. I liked it. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it was a bad movie. I'm just saying it's always regarded oh, as yeah. a huge bomb. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, this is definitely uh, definitely a bigger bomb than Treasure Planet was. So let's, let's talk about what went wrong. So many things. So many things that went wrong with this movie. Don't even know where to begin, but we're going to talk about it. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views. And rants, guys, over 281,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about Disney. Go out to piratesandprincesses.net for objective Disney news. Uh, believe it or not, you it's know, in some, Google News too. It's in Google News too, right? We're almost like a almost like a real business or something. Yeah. Look at that. So let's let's talk about this. Uh, yeah. So this this aged very very well. This is Brianna Wu who said that you know. Yay, Disney. If you thought conservatives freaked out over Lightyear, they're going to shit the bed over Strange World, which is great. Main protagonist is gay. Older people don't find it remarkable. Man, what's the big deal? Biracial marriage. What's the big deal? Almost no one is white. Again, what's the big deal? Climate change metaphor. Even the dog is disabled. I know. I'm like, she got the last one. Yeah, like people are gay and no one cares. You mean like... It always was, especially like in the last, like, you know, up, up until the last few years ago, people were gay all the time and nobody cared. People weren't white and nobody cared. Uh, yeah, I used to watch some of my favorite sitcoms. I don't know how many times I've told the story, but I feel like I have to tell it every time because we get new people in and they're stupid. I used to watch a lot of the uh, the sitcoms on TBS, you know, Good yeah, Times and Sanford and Son. Um, interracial marriage oh my god my head's gonna explode what do you think this is the 60s oh my god I mean, this, is, this just drives me nuts when they keep running with this but what's gonna happen is now we're gonna start seeing in lockstep it failed because the bigot same with Lightyear. it failed because there was a little short kiss scene in there or the same sex couple in there and that ruined the entire movie because that one scene that nobody gave two shits about yeah because uh, you know there's there's gay and then there's disney gay well, apparently, <laughs> I, haven't, I know, I haven't seen it, but apparently they said they really, really, really ham-fisted up the very beginning. And I will give them that. In, they won't be completely wrong because some people want uh, Rotten Tomatoes. That's the review. Gay people, boo, boo you know. So, yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that, that's cool. feeding into it, but that's not the majority. I think, um, and they knew, they had to have known out of the gate because that immediately disqualified them to release it in several countries mm -hmm. uh, doing that. But, um, I mean, that was, that was, what little marketing, what little buzz there was for this movie leading up to it? There wasn't any. They didn't do their due diligence in promoting it. But the, the media was like, hey, guys, there's a movie from that's, Disney with the gay that's character. That's all they're running with. Uh, and that was like Beauty and the Beast, too. It's like, hey, we're getting a live action Beauty and the Beast. But did we mention we're going to have our first explicitly gay character that LeFou's coming out of the closet? Did we Even mention he never did. For a, a third of a second in the, the very end of the movie. And most people have actually, they're done with the movie. And they're getting their popcorn ready and their coats ready. And they're getting ready to leave. Yeah, that's when LeFou comes out. It doesn't even come out. He makes make Scoo Goo Eyes as another guy. That's it. Make Scoo Goo Eyes as another Lefou guy. Lefou played by a straight man. Yes. Um, yeah, which I was surprised by. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> by Josh Gad being straight too. Who knew? knew. I, I was. Uh, I mean, I like Josh Gad, but I was just, you know, I was, I was like, oh, my gaydar is... never struck me as... I'm not... James gay. Corden, Josh Gad, my gaydar is broken. It's broken. But uh, anyway, so that was, that was all the chatter leading up to it. And here we are. Uh, no marketing from Disney, no release in, in several countries, and the, all the media talked about was how gay the movie is, and uh, the reviews were not good. I mean, look, Rotten Tomatoes, the scores were not good. People said the movie's just not good. It's not Disney caliber. Got the That's worst. what they said. Yeah. They said it was pretty, but they said the story was too convoluted, too confusing, too... They tried to cram too much into it, probably, for, you know, diversity and inclusion's sake. Um, that They said it looks pretty, but that's about it. Yeah. So, uh, here we are. It only earned... 18.6 million in the film's five-day domestic box office. They were projecting, if I recall correctly, uh, 20 to 30 yeah, million 20 to 30, yeah. domestic. And um, they it almost got, made the 20, but... Almost. 
Uh, you think when they were predicting that, that's all the more they were predicting it was going to make on like a, uh, it was like 120 to 130 million dollar movie to make. They would have been like, maybe we should just put this on Disney Plus. I think it actually wound up being 180 million. Is that what it was? Movie. Yeah, it was yeah. 180 million dollar budget. Now that's astronomical for an animated film. Um, yeah, how the hell did that cost that much? I, I don't know. I was surprised too. I thought it was like 100, 110. I thought it was like 120, 130 is what I heard. That is more than most Pixar movies cost. And I mean, look, the movie looked expensive from the trailers. At least the, the scenery looked expensive. And I think this is one that as it was developing, they had to have taken a look at this or Bob Chapek there. Somebody did and said, yeah, this thing's not going to make money. For so many reasons, this thing is not going to make money. But we're too far into it. We can't, you know. But then put it on Disney Plus. Just put it on Disney Plus. Use it as a way to drive subscribers. I mean, I wouldn't have bothered with the box office on this one. Or, I mean, it could be a case of we're going to sneak it into the box office. We really didn't plan on releasing it theatrically. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to claw back some of that money because this movie did cost more. Or he was doing what he's been reported to do, which was releasing it other place else to take their budgets. Yeah. So Bob Chapek, um, this, this is a whole nother conversation, but it does kind of, you know, uh, go with this. Um, it came out after the fact that part of the reason he got gone was he was actually double dipping. He would uh, use some of like television's budget to pay for Disney Plus shows by putting them on TV and being like, oh, look, this was a TV project, but not really. And that's kind of why I think we're seeing Andor on Hulu and Freeform because mm-hmm. they probably took some money from the television budget. And pushed it over to Andor. I think that's more to do with they're trying to get, gain subscribers because no one knows it exists. Right, right. And in this case, it might be like, well, we'll release it theatrically. Uh, we'll make a couple million dollars on it anyway. We're not going to spend any money on marketing because it's not worth it. And then we'll just dump it on the Disney Plus in time for Christmas. It'll probably be on Disney Plus in time for Christmas. They always release an animated movie on Christmas. Yeah, because this is not doing well. It's just not. And there's so many reasons why, even though it's going to be all g- guaranteed that they're going to run with bigots. Oh, I guarantee. <laughs> run with. The- oh, my God. That's Disney's next uh, run Disney event. Run with the bigots. Run with the bigots. There you go. Yes, yeah, so you can get a bigot badge for doing your 10K bigot run. You have to make sure you stick your nose up in there and you run past Buzz Lightyear and you run past any of the characters from Strange. <laughs> any World. characters that might be ambiguously gay. You yeah, you don't want to take the water from them. If they're not white, you have to run past That's them. That's right. You have to not, snub, you know, snub Tiana. If they're not straight white male, you have to run, run right past the them. The running of the bigots. Uh, anyway, Beast and Famine for Disney at Thanksgiving. Strange World fizzles. Wakanda stays hot. They yeah. were not going to cannibalize Wakanda no. for this movie. They, and they put it right between Wakanda and Avatar. It was doomed from the start. I mean, yeah, so I don't understand why they even bothered. It honestly could have been the best animated movie ever made, which is not, according to what I've heard, but it could have been the best movie ever made, but they they basically sent it out to die. They're like, we're going to dump it in the theater. I mean, they could have waited until like February, or but they wanted to get... Yeah, they didn't have to do to Christmas. No, but they wanted to dump it on Disney Plus in time for Christmas. I bet you. That's what, what's going to happen. Well, here's my thing. Just push up to another date because you, you rearranged it all the time. Yeah. When it wasn't going to be up against two big movies. Um, not that that would have saved it. Or just set it directly to Disney Plus. So Disney is right back to where they were in the late 90s, early 2000s with their their box office again. Like they had they always have this renaissance and Mm -hmm. then they kill it. They kill it. They always kill it. And then it took John Lasseter to bring it back. And I think we're again, I'm not saying John Lasseter is the sole driving creative force behind uh, recent Disney movies, but he damn well put his mark on every Disney movie that came out. There's been many jokes people are going to run with that. Put his fingers all over it. But no, what I'm saying is I, I think you're starting to see product coming out of the post Lasseter era. And um, we're going to get more of this. This is why the Pixar movies don't feel like Pixar movies, even though they're not objectively, they're not terrible, but they don't feel like a Pixar movie because you don't have John Lasseter involved in them or his, his, his uh, involvement was greatly diminished. Right. So, yeah, I said Strange World fizzled with audiences out of the gate, according to the uh, Chicago Tribune. The production, which carried a reported $180 million budget, grossed just $18.6 million in ticket sales in its first five days. That would be bad for three days. In $11.9 million over the weekend in North American theaters, according to Studio Estimates Sunday, it is creeping toward uh, $30 million worldwide. But again, many countries are not going to play it. Because you know the reason, right? You know the reason. Um, I think it deviated too far. People would expect to like, you know, I love the idea behind it. I really did. It was like a very Sky Captain-y type idea. And I like that. I love Sky Captain. So I thought that was a really cool idea. But then they just then they just got, made it all like 
strange. They made it a strange world. They, 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 Even the dog is disabled. They, they removed it too much. I know. It, I mean, let's, come, let's be honest here. They did try to put every checkbox they could possibly think they could shove into this movie. But um, even that, I don't think it's up to sway people because no one cares about if character's not straight. No one cares. I mean, they do. It, it's a kid's movie, I guess. They don't care about the fact that people are interracially married. It, what, like I said, what is this, the 60s? They don't care about that. The dog's disabled. So what? Dog, disabled dog videos are hot. I'm just like... Hot like they get a lot of views or hot like you find them... They get a lot of views. Okay. Um, And, okay. you know, so I get that. But it's just like... It was too far removed from what people wanted in a Disney film. And I'm not talking about the cast. I'm talking about the concepts. This kind of happened with, um, you know, with Treasure Planet and with Atlantis. Right. Where they were like kind of high concept movies that felt more and like. they're good movies. Yeah, they felt more, honestly, like something that Don Bluth would have done. Right. They just didn't feel like they were, like, Disney. Stuck Disney. And, and now they've caught up. Their audience has caught up to them now. They're popular now. But they really weren't when they came out. Make the disabled dog a princess and call it a day. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, this is this is not good. I don't know. They were talking about Knives Out, too. I forgot that was even a thing. Uh, they had it in 600 theaters. I thought it was just a Netflix thing. Glass Onion. See, I wouldn't connect that to Knives Out. Glass Onion. Uh, between the glass onion mystery, they don't know how much money it actually made. And strange world miss. It was a reminder that the exhibition business is still far from normal. You know, no, last... it's not far from normal. No, so it's not. want to see your damn movie. Which is it? This is Schrodinger's box office. They're like the box office is rebounding with Wakanda and with Avatar and all these movies and Top Gun. Everything's great. Oh, but this one misfired. So the box office people. Some people didn't come out. This is like when uh, James Bond came out last year, and the excuse. They used for it missing the mark and it made money. It, it just didn't do as well as it, it could have or should have. The excuse everybody used was, well, old people watch James Bond and they're not coming out because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. But then other movies came out and did well. Uh, other movies came out and completely destroyed. I mean, lots of old people came out for Top Gun Maverick a couple of months later because they wanted to see the movie. Sometimes. People just don't want to see your movie. Mm -hmm. And you can try to rationalize it, but really, people just don't want to see your damn and in movie. in both cases, this Glass Onion and the Strange World, I don't remember seeing much advertising for either one. I only know about Strange World because I, I cover Disney stuff, and I know about the Glass Onion because I we do pop culture stuff. But most people don't do that. So most people are going to be normies that are out there not, don't even know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, so here they talk about Treasure Plant. Now, Treasure Plant did $60 million in 2002, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, ironically enough, the same, pretty much the same time frame as this. But you have to adjust that for inflation. So technically, Treasure Planet made more money back then than Strange World did mm -hmm. now, obviously, because we're talking, you know, 20 years ago. And but that's within 4,258 4 theaters. Almost 5,000. Is that Wakanda Forever? No, it's Strange World. Oh, that's 4, almost 5,000. Almost 5,000. That's 000. more theaters than Wakanda Forever. And that's more theaters, I guarantee you, than existed when Treasure Planet came out. Holy. I mean, that's effing terrible. No one no one knew what it was. No one cared. And Treasure Planet did not cost $180 million. I mean, that was unheard of money back then for, for a live action movie, let alone an animated movie. Um, they're like, it's been, the reviews have been mostly positive, 73%. No, 73% is the critical score, not the audience score. Now, the audience score has gone up. I didn't check it today. I know it was lower yesterday and then it was going up, which I expected. You know, a couple reasons. One, more people had a chance to see it. Um, two, I think it's a matter, but there's still not many reviews. Two, Disney had a chance to, you know, get the right kind of reviews in there. Yeah. Yes. They had time to massage the numbers. But Again, this is a movie that on every level has has failed. It had a low cinema score. It was the lowest cinema score for any Disney movie in the last 20 years. I mean, it was a B, which, I mean, everybody else would be pretty thrilled. Hey, I got a B. That's pretty good. But this is Disney Animation Studios, Walt Disney Animation Studios. They're, they're used to getting A or A minus, A plus in many cases. And this one came in at B. So, you know, objectively, audiences were like, eh, eh. Yeah, there's... You know, I not, didn't see it, so I'm I can't. Not, yeah, I'm not saying movie, it's but. terrible. I'm saying the marketing was absolutely atrocious. Uh, there was no marketing. This one feels like they just they literally just sent it out to die, and a lot of people commented about that. And but I'm like, I'm also like, almost five thousand theaters, and you only mustered up eighteen million dollars. That is bad on every level. And well, even I mean, you know, talking about Black Panther cannibalizing 
ticket sales from this one. You go to McDonald's, they don't have Strange World toys. They have Black Panther toys. Which is odd. Yeah. Dare I say strange. They they didn't, yeah, I thought that was surprising because they had time for one from, and they'll probably go right into Avatar toys. I honestly haven't checked the McDonald's schedule, so I don't know. Yeah, they, they sent this one out to die. They're going to dump it on Disney Plus before Christmas. I can almost guarantee you because they always drop a, a movie, an animated movie on Disney Plus at Christmas time. Last year it was Encanto, which still did better than this one. And, uh, you know, before that we had, what was it, Soul? I think it was the first one they, they did that with. Yeah, they dumped it on there as a Christmas day, whatever, because of COVID. Yeah, yeah. But that now it's just the norm. And this is, this is the unfortunate uh, problem we have, especially with animation, because, okay, Disney is way overspending on Disney Plus content. Animation is now becoming nothing but Disney Plus content. And I think what's gonna happen is there's going to be a lot less animation because they're gonna be like the last couple of movies we put in the theater, the animated movies we put in the theater, including Lightyear, which was a Toy Story spinoff, failed. You know, they did not do well. So I think we're not, I mean, this might be good in the fact that we might go back to getting like one good movie a year versus three eh, movies yeah. a year but there's not going to be as much animation. It's too expensive. They're going to cut costs and there's no financial incentive to do it. And that's well, they that's set themselves up for that. They though. set themselves up for it. I mean, hey, Chapek fly out said, I don't I don't give a shit. Well, that about. was obvious. It was that that came across. That came across. So we'll see. Maybe maybe Bob Iger feels like blowing some more money on movies that nobody wants to watch. I don't know. Going to wrap it up. Yep. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants guys. We'll talk later. Bye.